This is a nice selection. Now, what, what have we got here, Trevor? Basically, what we have here is a selection of some of what they call the Wesley Collection, which are patents and designs and cutaway guns of Wesley Richards that have been built for the last sort of 150 years or so. Oh, yeah. So, some real nice examples of guns here that are quite interesting from a sort of historical point of view. Yeah. This one I like because this is a cutaway gun, which is nice to show people oh, that's lovely, isn't it? how the whole mechanism works. And this would have been a, probably a salesman's tool at the time. Oh, right. So, if we put a snap cap in there, I mean, it has. The Wesley features, the lever work, etc., the safety button, the model C doll's head, which, as you saw upstairs, hasn't changed at all in mm. well over 100 years. The single trigger, so you can see this all working. So what's nice is you pull the trigger on this, push the safety off, pull the trigger. It's now fired the left-hand barrel, which yeah. is really quite nice. And as you open the gun, you start to see how the whole mechanism works. So the drop of the barrels is oh, recocking yes. the gun. So it's recocking the gun, and you'll watch the ejector work fire off in a moment. Like so. Oh yeah. So it's really nice to oh, see that, that how the whole nice. thing works. Oh. Safety off, so you see all the safety mechanism so, push forward, yeah. pull the trigger, which is kick the sear out of the bent, fire the mechanism, the mainspring, hit the cocking limb here, so then as the gun is open, it resets the safety. Now it's the drop of the barrels, which is this famous patent of Anson and Dealey's, is now Re-cocking the gun, and as the gun's now, the gun is now yeah, cocked. We did, yeah, we heard, heard it before, click. Yeah, then. so it's cocked before it ejects. So now it's cocked. Further pop. Pop. Look at that. And it's your ejector work, and that's now reset itself as well. That's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a right. nice feature, and if you look at, so that's that gun, which is this early cutaway with all those Wesley features, and then this one here, which I'll show you as well. Which there's another cutaway. This is the probably one of the first. Box lock. So this gun again is quite simple. This is double trigger design. So again, we drop that snap cap in, close this gun up, push this one off. Now there's no. This is left barrel, so we pull the back trigger. Once the gun's fired, and as it opens, there you go. It's a non ejector. So the gun uh, was a non ejector before with a box yeah. lock design that you see here. So it's got this patent on here and the various numbers. Yeah. But this gun was, you know, the box lock, and it was, wasn't an ejector. The ejectorization came later on. People then developed the ejector mechanism yeah. to suit this type of gun. So there you go. Very nice. This is a pin fire gun. What's nice about this? I'm sorry, gents. Is this has this very long top lever oh, yeah, on here. Uh, you know, the top. This is the first sort of version of a, a biting mechanism here to lock the barrels down with this lever. What's nice is on the back of the stop. It says. This gun was bought by John Afflett of Clent for £45 in 1862. He used no other. This was the first gun the firm sold with a top lever action. Look at that, that's lovely, isn't that? There you are. So the first top lever action gun. Beautiful. What's the next one along? Because that's a hammer as well, isn't it? Yeah, some of these others here will just be variations on lock design, lever work, I mean, if we pick this one here, this again is, you know, these are all variations you can see with this lever work patents. So they were all sort of oh, yeah. modifying, moving along here. This is actually a centre fire, but it would appear to be probably a conversion from pin fire. With island locks, crab joint, Damascus barrels again, obviously. But nice, very nice. There you go, so that's that one there. This is another box lock here, which is just interesting because this shows you that development of the top lever now it's almost oh, yeah. perfecting that yeah, design is, that you man. see today this is, yeah very but similar. this has safeties here oh look at that on the side so it has two safeties oh, yeah. so they cock on opening so that's quite an intricate design really but there you go it's ready to fire God. i've never seen another gun like it no i have to say so it maybe never was actually produced in any numbers but again it's a very early box lock. so there you go Ready to fire. Oh, nice. But what's probably also interesting then is you could actually have one at a time. Oh, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. So here we have uh, a gun that enables you to fit the stock correctly. That's right, yes. So what are the procedures that we have? Well, this here is known as a tri-gun. All the makers use them, still use them today. In right. Even modern makers, perhaps in some, will use their own version of a tri-gun for their over and unders. Yeah. This is to measure all your measurements for cast, length, you know, your cone position, it's all to do with people's body sizes and shapes and so on. So this gun here, you know, you make various adjustments to that. This one, for example, oh, yeah, is altering the cone, you see that moving up and, up and down. On the back here, 
these are all different length pieces that you can actually knock off so you could do the different lengths. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. So we have a box that contains all of these of various, various lengths. And what's nice about this, it has a measurement for double trigger format and single trigger. Oh, yeah. So that you know that that gives you the variation between the two. I mean, that particular example there is a, obviously a single trigger gun, selective. I mean, they still built that even on a tri gun. Yeah, that's nice, yeah. With all, again, the Wesley features. So that's that version, which is a 12 bore. And if you just hold that a yeah. second, John, I will pull out a nice little 20 bore. We did a 20 bore version as well. Oh, this one needs sweet. a bit of repair to it, but it's. Yeah. But this is Wesley Richards' patent one trigger fitting gun. Oh, that's nice. Quite nice, isn't yeah, it? But, yeah, I, I mean, think these, are, these are quite old, and you've got to be fair, these will you know, they'll probably be nearly 100 years old, these guns yeah. themselves. We don't tend to use them, obviously, anymore. But, but they're actually, lovely to have in the collection just to show people what, uh, what's happening. Yeah. And we even managed to do one here for rifles, for bolt rifles. Oh, that's nice, that's interesting. But this is a sort of, this was a later version, to be honest with you. And the rifles, they're dictated slightly more than measurements with these because of scopes and so on. So you tend to bring the cones very high. So your measurements are more to do with the length as much as anything else. Interesting that um, we've got the, uh, the the attachment that's gone on for the gentleman that's going to have the, uh, yeah, the, the yeah. scope on there upstairs. That's very unusual because most people would be very happy with the standard measurements. What it is with him is he's quite long in the neck and he's quite a tall guy and so he has this way but he's comfortable like that so that's how we've done it for him yeah. so but that's all part of the bespoke service yeah, yeah, and this, really this nice. fitting room yeah well, it looks really nice when it's yeah. uh, when it's together as well yeah. and it's simple as well it's very simple which a lot of people that's what they want they don't want it too technical they yeah. want something on it goes off it comes and it doesn't look nasty and then the, as you saw with that particular rifle the lines are still kept yeah, very yeah. nice it's very nice yeah very nice we have some single shots Wesley Richards obviously developed various single shot rifles of some of them are military. This again would be, this is very rough looking, but this is a transition, you can see that, for muzzle loading. Because a lot of these early rifles, you know, they had problems with the actions actually sticking. I mean, this is a very crude rifle, which was, I mean, look at the wood. I think this rifle, I don't know, but I think it was probably just a patent again. This was just cobbled together to see whether the system would actually work. And, you know, look at the barrel on it. And look at the rib, it's so archaic and so, I mean, it's like an ironmonger's tool, isn't it, really? Yeah. But actually it isn't, you know, 52 bore, it's a, it's a, you know, this may have been for military use, but was probably for sporting use as well. So single shot there, which then moved into the patent of, um, of 1897. And this is where Wesley stopped by about the First World War, these were stopped. But this is a single shot, 500 nitro. Oh, that's not, so this the interesting thing about that is true. Although that is very agricultural, yeah. now it's been finished, you can still see all the lines in it. Yeah, right now in. you can see that. I mean, very light. I mean, that would kick seriously for that calibre. I mean, normally that would be a double rifle calibre. Yeah, I mean, this is full nitro, so this is a real serious piece. Side safety there. So there's your safety mechanism for that. Yes. But these were very nice rifles, but I'll say we stopped these by about the First World War production of these had actually stopped. Uh, things have changed, people want to prefer double rifles. Yeah. Uh, today people, you know, do business out of just building single shots because they have such a nice style yeah, and line to them, don't they, you know? Down. And they're lighter, they're easier to carry, so it's quite a quite a nice tool, but this is a serious piece of a rifle. That is, isn't it? But there you go. Are there any records to just sort of how many different um, guns and rifles that have been produced over the years? We do have records. I mean, we're now into with the double guns and rifles. We're up to the 20,000s. Really? Yeah, but I mean, pistols had their own one stage. Then the Mausers had their own. But many of the ledgers were lost over time, you see. Yeah. And because also that, because these were businesses, after X's, it wasn't, it didn't seem probably that important. Some of them, yeah. especially the military stuff, because we obviously worked in military contracts during the wars, but none of that exists. There's no paperwork for any of that anywhere. It's, it is sad because now yeah. obviously it's all very important. This history of manufacturing, especially bespoke product, you know, is, um, is important. So it is sort of quite nice that you do keep a gallery of uh, one or two very, very interesting pieces. We, we, did, yeah, you often get, did you often get phone calls of people saying, well, you know, we think we've got an old rifle, would you be interested? You get it, we do, yes. Sent we do, yes, exactly right. People will often query something and the problem is the records that we do have are often very basic. Mm. So you can't tell, was it fancily engraved, was it this, was it case, it doesn't necessarily say that. So I often ask people, send me pictures because they might have something really special that, yeah. and also most, a lot of people have inherited it or if they're abroad, there's no licensing. So 
they've inherited it, they don't know what they've got. Yeah. But we sent some fabulous stuff all around the world of what was the empire back then. So you yes. never know where something will turn up. Yes. And it can turn up in the most unlikely place. So we always, you know, get, generally get pictures and then we try and track it down for our records, see if the provenance, if it was built for anybody, you know, important or special or interesting. Yes. You know, so it's quite nice. And it's nice going back in history and then looking at that person. And we built for some great people over the years, you know. Mm. Roy a lot of royalty and then film stars and explorers, you know, and, and, and hunters, obviously.